up is the right fielder, Stevie Shaw, on the mound, Graham Robertson for DeRory. And with me today, Kevin Herlihy. Kevin, how do you see the game? Well, it's certainly going to be a great final. There's no doubt about that. Paniki and Bernie fighting back late in the game against Cardinals to make this final. DeRory being the form horse through this uh, Lion Red series. And I think we're in for a good game. And I might just go for... Paniki Kulberni to carry on their winning way and to come through probably with a greater batting depth than we have from the Dorori team but Dorori and Graham Robinson and uh, Darren Zach with them as well two tremendously informed pitchers and I think we're in for a great game here today well I was second there it certainly is going to be a good game the pitcher out there you get a good shot of Graham Robertson a veteran a lot of speed he mixes pitches up well and he gets his first strikeout shot goes down that brings to the plate the shortstop for P.K. Kerry Johansson, he fouls off the first pitch. P.K. have really been a little bit shaky today. They, uh, they ended up beating the Cardinals, but it was a, uh, a game I think Marty Grant would be glad to have behind him. Certainly Marty definitely not up to his usual standard, was struggling to find the plate a little bit. And in Kerry Johansson, of course, we have one of the heroes of the Paniki team who actually started the recovery which led to Paniki coming out in the later innings is to just nudge out the Cardinal team. Well it's interesting you say that he was one of the uh, the heroes because he batted in two crucial runs but then he gave up an error in the uh, bottom of the seventh that let two runs in. I think he was just a little making it a, a real intense semi-final there. A man with a sense of the dramatic. There's a good shot. Call strikeout. Robertson looking good here. Two up two down. Good pitch there by Robertson. Johansson looking at that pitch, but that was coming in, just climbing a little bit with that low rise and completely taking Johansson out of the innings. Good shot of Robertson at the plate. Now, Mike Nichols, you'll see occasionally during the uh, commentary here, you'll see a big, tall lion red can way out beyond the center field fence. Anybody who hits that on the fly, it's an automatic $1,000. And yesterday we saw Mike Nichols plant one to within a couple of meters of it. The crowd were very happy to have given him that thousand dollars, but uh, nope, you've got to hit it in the air. Nichols, a big swing. Robertson looks to have his stuff today. But he held off. Oh, a call three strikes. I think Mike Nichols might, might have been a little bit lucky on that check swing, Bob. Anyway, I think he went pretty well through, and uh, Robertson coming back with this pitch again. Not unlike the pitch that he got Johansson out on the previous batter, and Robertson more than happy with that start to the game and uh, a great boost for Dorori going into this final. Player coach Dave Wall, 333, is fairly healthy batting average. Marty Grant whistles one past him. Yeah, Dave Wall had a, has had an excellent season, been consistent all the way through. Grant was a bit shaky with his control this morning, but he managed to survive, and here he is once again. He's probably going to go the whole distance. Big day for Marty Grant on the mound. Pitching to Wall. First base hit. To sort of start Dorori looking for there with Davey Wall coming up. Hitting the ball really hard out through the shortstop area past Johansson to record the first safe hit there. Grant pretty much down, hitting it hard into the ground there. Getting right past Johansson there at shortstop to record the first hit for Dorori and, and a great start by them. So the first hit of the game to Dave Wall and up to plate. There's a mighty swinger, Shane Hunuhunu, right fielder for Dorori. He planted one about 30 meters beyond the right field fence yesterday. Big swinger. Well, you see a, an example of the swing there, but uh, Grant managed to slip it past him. Grant looking like he's got a bit of speed. He's just finished a game, a tight game. PK beat the Cardinals 5-4. Do his windup. Hunu Hunu pops it high. It's going to be out of play down the left field line. So the count, two and two. Hunu Hunu is a player that likes to pick his pitch. And if he can jump onto it, it'll go a long way. But he, he really puts a lot of uh, effort into the swing. Have you ever seen this man bunt, Kevin? He's pretty fast running. He can, he can lay the ball down and bunt. Don't, don't worry about that. But uh, 
again he'll be riding pretty high after that big hit yesterday and hoping to get to Rory out to a really early lead against PK here in this final three strike and Huna Huna walks back to the bench Marty Grant with his first strikeout Garcia an input from the United States plays out of Santa Rosa and San Francisco and has been a vital part in the Dorori team this year as you can see by the batting average of 4 and 4 he's really been hitting the ball hard has been a tremendous help to the both pitching staff here and we can look forward to big things from Garcia today Grant comes in, the runner's away. Good throw to second base. He's out. So Wall tagged on the steal. Corrido out there around second base. Wall didn't like the call. It's the pitch. Again, Aitken just throwing out of that crouch there, the ball going down. That was pretty close at the end, wasn't it, Bob? It looks like he, Wall may have had a bit of a justification in that. Lead off batter for PK. Murray McLean, and there's an impressive statistic. 10 RBIs, runs batted in for Murray McLean. Again, another experienced New Zealand player. Missed out on the last World Championship, but was there for a couple before that. Uh, an excellent hitter of the ball, an excellent sportsman all around. Of course, having played uh, provincial rugby and... Uh, well, it's so we've got one strike. Well, here's two old war horses facing up to one another. McLean with the uh, stick in his hand and Graham Robertson there glaring at him from the pitcher's mound. One ball, one strike. McLean hitting 3-3-3. Three, three, three. 10 RBIs. In comes the pitch. Long shot to left center. That's it. Over the flags. Whoa. You can add another RBI to that one. That's number 11 for McLean. And he certainly got all of that from Graham Robinson. From the time it left the bat, there was no doubt where that ball was going. And McLean gives Panicki that lead with a tremendous hit there to center field. Never in doubt at any stage. And a great hit by McLean. Kiss it goodbye. Bat meets ball, ball meets stratosphere, and it's 1-0. It wasn't a bad pitch from Graham Robinson either. As we said, uh, some of those big hitters, though, they like that ball up around their eyes, and that one was starting to climb out of the strike zone, but not fast enough to beat that hard swinging bat of McLean, and he certainly made no bones about that one. That was gone. Kevin, what do you do if you're pitching against a team like PK? It's just awesome batting power there. And what do you do, pitch and hope? To a certain extent, obviously, you've got to do a lot of homework before, and uh, I think these Kaniki batters like the ball coming onto them at, at speed. Well, the designated hitter, Wayne Saunders, takes a call strike. I think the, the times that I have seen Kaniki struggle a little bit this year is perhaps when they have been faced with someone that's throwing a little bit of off speed. Saunders, the designated hitter, facing Robertson. Yes, well, Robertson gets it down low. Saunders goes fishing, and it's another strikeout. So back to the leadoff hitter, Steve Schott. Struck out first time up. He's going to be safe. He's as good as a bunt. Took a swing at it. Kerry Johansson, the shortstop at the plate. Steve Schott on first. Robertson takes the sign into his windup. Shot goes to second, heads for third on the wild throw, and air at second base. Paniki certainly with their tails up here. Uh, as I said before, it's amazing what happens when you've got that one run up there. Garcia almost guessing that uh, steal was on. You can see him coming out there, but the throw was wild. And shot not stopping at second on that bad throw and carrying on to third base. Uh, even with two out, we can see added pressure now on the shoulders of Robertson with that guy on third base. Shot past the third baseman into left field. Third baseman got his hand on it, but Brown could not hang on to it, so the run scores. Paniki, they can see there with their tails up now. Johansson right on that one, slashing it down through the shortstop area. A clean hit, scoring Steve shot, and Paniki have certainly come to play here in this final, Bob. It's quite often the case here where the winning team from the drawing that by and going straight into the final how many times have you seen it whether at a disadvantage Paniki having come off an excited win their adrenaline's flowing and Dorori coming in cold and Paniki are picking up from where they left off in that last game 
Well, and Johansson took off at the pitch. He gets second. It's the pitch from Robertson climbing right out of the strike zone. Nichols miles away from that one, and certainly Robertson will be pleased to see the end of that innings with Paniki leading this game by two runs to nil as we move into the third innings. Here we go, it's the bottom of the fifth. DeRory really need to get on the board here. First batsman is Phil Twigden, the first baseman. Phil hit a line drive. He was out to the shortstop his first time at bat. Fouls the first pitch off. DeRory need a runner at first base. They've got to put some life into this inning. There's a good shot as we come in on the pitcher, the batter. You see the pitcher take the sign just now. Grant into his windup. Blow it away. DeRory certainly still have their opportunities. Uh, Grant tending to pull back into some of those stages that he was in the previous game, falling behind on the count. So, yeah, I mean, he's giving Dorori the opportunity, with as far as their batting is, to hone on some of this pitching, and, and they've just got to take advantage of that. And I'm sure that if they can get someone on early, with none or one down, they've got a good chance of scoring. The ball's going to go down the left field line, but it's uh, well foul, and this count remains three and two. Pitch there, he's hanging in there, head down, watching the ball all the way onto the bat. Good batting, and of course, the further this game goes, uh, it's got to start to take its toll on the pitching of Marty Grant, having now well into the second game, almost with only about a 30 40 minute break. So, if Dory can get in there, the odds could swing their favor. Well, the ball's up high, and Marty Grant gives up. I think it's his first walk in the game. So, Twigden on first. The designated hitter, Dowd, at the plate. Most important, as far as Dororia are concerned, that Dowd makes contact with the ball, puts it in play, and even if he doesn't get on safely himself, to advance that lead runner and Twigden to second base, giving them the opportunity to score. They've still got, even though we're getting on in the innings, they've still got enough time to worry about just scoring the one run at a time. And of course, once they get one run, then the pressure goes back onto Paniki, and it's a good bunt by Dowd there. Well, that's great. That's a good sacrifice bunt. That's exactly what he did last time. He bunted safely. This time, he pushes Twigden down to second base. Bunt. They go to one. Brown is out, but that pushes Twigden to third. Now, Phil Casey. First strike, Marty Grant threw a good pitch. We got Twigden at first. We got Steve Casey on first and Phil Casey batting. There's two down. Well, he's in the hole, he's two strikes against him. Oh, shot off of Marty Grant's glove. One, the runner scores. Steve Casey goes to third and Phil Casey stays on one. Hey, new ball game. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, that DeRory had to put the pressure on. We knew that with the speed of Casey that he was prepared to back himself. There's the pitch, hitting it hard back. Grant tried to pick up that ball, had no chance. He'd be off balance. We had um, Wyatt coming in, but hit the ball eluded him as well. And so we have DeRory now registering that run. Two runs to one. One and two the count. Ball's the batter. Ball's high and outside, two and two. The ball's too strong. Garcia just pulling that one in a little bit, but again, Robertson being ahead in the count is able just to move the ball just that little bit further out, hoping to tempt Laws to have a swing at something just outside the zone, which he does there. So here we come. We're playing for everything here. There's the strikeout falling down. Garcia picks it well out of the ground there to retire Laws. We move now to the bottom of the seventh innings. The score, Paniki Coburni two, Dorori one, and this is Dorori's last opportunity. Phil Casey, the leadoff batter, lays down a bunt. 
And he's going to be safe at first. Whoa, life springs eternal. The silver heels of Phil Casey are flashed. And we see Casey backing himself, putting down a great bump there, the ball bouncing high. Aitken taking that ball there, and Casey almost in the row. The throw going inside the diamond, and McLean cutting it off there. So we see Casey on, and that's what Dorori needed. They needed someone on base there to give themselves that opportunity. Tying run in the form of Phil Casey on first base there, bringing to bat Davey Wall. a single to left. Whoa! Maybe in case you the second there, are we going to see a repeat of that fine end that we saw to the Junior World Series here and uh, Dorori certainly obliging with Wall getting right onto that one. Hitting the ball solidly through that shortstop gap there. Dorori runners on first and second, two out in this game. Still in the grasp of Dorori to take it right out of the hands of Paniki here in the bottom of the seventh innings. And at the plate, here we have a repeat of that confrontation we saw when the bases were loaded, which went right down to the wire. And again, we have Shane Hunahunu facing the pitching of Marty Grant with two out. Hit on the wrist, Hunahunu tried to check his swing. Couldn't avoid the ball. That's strike one. So Grant ahead on the count. Certainly got to hand it to this Dorori team. They certainly haven't laid down after that early setback. They've Fought and fought their way back. They've scored that one run. And here we are with their backs up against the wall with two out. And they've put two runners on base. And still for the show to take this right out of the grips of Paniki here in the bottom of the seventh innings. They never say die. Northerners here. Shane Hunahunu fouls off number two. But significantly enough, he's behind in the count now. 0 and 2. Here's a changeup. No. That's it. That's it. Down inside again, Marty Grant recording the strikeout. And again, we have the Lion Red Series going to the Kaniki Kaburni side. Well, there you have it. In seven innings, the players mob Marty Grant. The man of the weekend, as Kevin Hurley, heard, Hurley he said earlier, he's pitched the team to their fourth championship in seven attempts. And it's just as exciting in the women's softball test series against Australia. Australia are now ahead 2-1. to one. one game to play and that should sort everybody out. We'll keep you up and we'll have that for you next week. There's still lots more to come today though on Countrywide Bay Grandstand. New Zealand cricket's big winners from the long but not so hot. Papa, 知道農曆新年就來到了,今年這個法國佬買了一批很便宜的貨給你。你現在可以買到很便宜、很低賣給你。這個機會呢,他說,第一次的。哦,好,送上。My father says fine, but what exactly is it you want to sell him? Raymond, if you'd be so good. Guaranteed to brighten any Oriental gathering. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. You need to park the car. Right, where are we going? We are not going anywhere. I'm going to see a man about a dog. I'll see you back here in an hour. Search that diamond again. That was the dog then. What dog? The dog you went to see the man about. Oh, oh well, yeah. Fine, fine. Keep, keep, keep your eyes on the road, right? This Tony's like the Scarlet. What's his name? Everywhere and nowhere. 
Dave says there isn't a phone number listed. Well, do you want to try further down? No, no, we'll come back later. This place is like a warren. Hello, Ray. Oh, I Sid. Arthur about? Yeah, I'll keep you a moment. What are you creeping up on me like that for? Sit outside for you. Sid, I've put word out about the Cookerhoods. I should hear something soon. It's not the Cookerhoods. I want to talk to you about Arthur. Take a look at this. <laughs> well, you're looking for a new car, then? Don't be silly, Arthur. I've got 80 of these in the showroom. What I want and need is a new lamppost. Lamp post? Yes, lamp post. To replace the one I demolished after the annual dinner. Reverse back into it, see? Well, I do see. I hate to think what the lamp post looks like. Well, with my luck, I couldn't hit a modern, ordinary one. I had to pick one with a preservation order on it. If I don't get a replacement, the council's going to do me. What'd you come to me for? What you want is a builder's yard. Not on this one, Arthur. Victoriana. Fluted with an octagonal head. You're always getting strange items coming your way. Well, I'll keep my eyes open. How much are you prepared to pay? Money's no object. I can't cope with a court case. Not in our line of business. Well, lampposts aren't usually my forty, but that phrase, money no object, will doubtless concentrate the mind. I'll see what I can do. I don't mind running these over to Chinatown. Why don't you have an early night? Early night? What would I do with an early night? Well, you haven't exactly been yourself today, have you? Slipping off to see men about dogs, and I thought you was having a fit in the office. The moral of that story, my son, is always not before entering. I'm right as rain. I'll drop these bulbs off, and then I'll probably see you back at the Winchester. assaulting a police officer and contravening the Sexual Offences Act. Television One congratulates the Holmes team for winning Best News and Current Affairs program at the Film and Television Awards. Holmes, they'll continue to search out the facts and tell it straight every weeknight, 6.30 on One. Saturday, Mount Arrowsmith Station in the mid-Canterbury High Country, run by a woman on her own. Lifestyle's just great. Mustering, bailing, shearing and mending, she does it all. I think it's important to, to be able to still wear a skirt. Country Calendar, Saturday on One. Snowtex family collection in the all-new designer packs. Snowtex tissues, so gentle, so soft, so right for the whole family. Snow 
The Ubix MVP Awards are hotting up and this Saturday in Hamilton, New Zealand play Australia in the fourth One Day International. Ubix are proud to be New Zealand and to support New Zealand's finest with the Ubix MVP Awards on One World of Sport this Saturday. Cats purr, cause cats prefer. Cats purr, cause cats prefer. Chef, the perfectly balanced diet in every can. Cats prefer Chef Meow. Hello, Michael Hill Jeweler. I have an amazing range of wedding bands, all at special prices. Man's Diamond Wedding Band was $220, now $119. Hard-wearing man's diamond set gold wedding band was $259, now $129. Traditional man's nine carat gold band in set with a diamond was $249, now $129. Now is the time for a wedding band from Michael Hill Jeweler. Mm, what does it take to look great? How do you do it every time? The new kids on the track are wearing the latest hooded sweats from Hallenstein's. 100% cotton and outstanding value at just $29.95. And make them match with fleece pants. Unbeatable All buying, also only $29.95 while stocks last. All it takes to look great. Hallenstein's. All it takes to All look great. All it takes to look great. If your face was square, shaving would be simple. But your face has curves. Introducing the revolutionary Schick FX, the only twin blade razor that flexes to follow the curves of your face. Schick FX, we're changing the face of shaving. I don't know how you do it, how you find the time. You say there's nothing to it, but you do it all the time. And only you ought to be congratulated. The Oriental Carpet Palace is here to attack the handmade rug industry with its cutthroat prices. Afghan Baluchi, slashed to $99. Large Persian Killams, slashed to $495. Princess Bakaras, slashed to $299. Persian Isfahan, slashed to $4,998. Thousands of authentic handmade carpets will be slashed up to 80% off. Starts this Saturday, five days only, open 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. North Pavilion, Wellington Show and Sports Centre, John Street, Newtown. They take my tie and braces away. Well, in case you try to top yourself. Mm, how thoughtful. How long do they keep us in here? It varies. I'm in for acquiring cars, but they'll bail me in a little while. You're being a bit indiscreet, admitting it. <laughs> Not much choice. So they caught me with my head underneath the dashboard. I tried to give them some fanny light. So I was dizzy. So I had nowhere to sleep. I was just resting for a while. What was their response? So I'd be more comfortable in here. What are these others in here for? That one over there doing the press-ups. He tried to do a runner from a restaurant. The others, they're all in for being drunk and disordered. They'll be let out soon. But you could be here quite a while. Why? Now, oh, come on. You're not exactly running the mill, are you? No, I most certainly am not. I've got an international organisation. Branches throughout Europe. Oh, well, they've taken my business cards away. Yeah, well. I knew it. I told you, I told you. I said, when we see him in reception, I said, now that is an international embezzler if ever I have seen one. I am not an embezzler. Yeah, of course not, Governor. You don't worry, I'm not a plant. I'm highly respected in my community. Naturally. That would be all part of the uh, front. Here. Your first division, aren't you? I most certainly am. Right. Let's have the curb crawler. Attempted to check the address you gave us. There was no one there. No, there wouldn't be. Her indoors is out visiting. What, this time of night? She's staying with her sister in Cromer. 
Case of while the cat's away, Sarge. Looks like it, Dicky. Cat or cat? We haven't got a cat. Just tropical fish. We've caught ourselves a comedian. Let's talk about these. It's a red light bulb. Nothing unusual about that. What's unusual, Mr. Daly, is that we discovered getting on for three gross of these in your car. Run a chain of dark rooms, do we, sir? There's a perfectly simple explanation for the light bulbs. And what is more, you'll find a receipt in my wallet. We already have. A French receipt. Well, of course. They're French light bulbs. I'll uh, see you later then, Dave. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Which is a club? Oh, yeah, he is. Right! Arthur Daly, you are charged that in Barrington Street, SE1, you did assault William Collins, a constable of the Metropolitan Police, in the execution of his duty, contrary to Section 51 of the Police Act of 1964. You are further charged that in Barrington Street, you did solicit a woman for the purposes of prostitution, contrary to Section 2 of the Sexual Offences Act 1985. You're not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say will be taken down and may be used as evidence at your trial. I'd like you to check these, please, Mr. Daly. And then sign a receipt. We're going to hold on to the light bulbs daily while further inquiries are being made. Don't say hello, Ray. If you do, it'll be taken down and used as evidence against you. Come on, get me the sanity. Hey, what you done? I'll tell you later. And he kept going on about them red light bulbs. I explained to him I was on my way to deliver them to a customer in Chinatown. I only got out of the car to check a lamppost. Check a lamppost? Yeah, Sid's looking for one. Fluted Victorian with octagonal head. Precisely. I thought I saw one, so I got out of the car to check it. Next thing I know, I'm being mugged. At least I thought I was being mugged. Who, who by? Well, it turned out to be two plainclothes melons. I've been charged, Dave. He fell over me foot and I get done for assault. Done me more damage than it did him. And there was a business of the girl. You mentioned three charges, Arthur. Yeah, something about curb crawling. I wasn't even in the car. Now, I just had a long conversation with the Crown Prosecution Service. See, Ray, that is the advantage of having a good legal man in your corner. I'm obliged to you, Mr. Daly. So what? It's all cleared up, is it? I'll get a formal apology? Not quite. They're proceeding with the three charges against you. The case will come up at the earliest possible date. You seem to be taking a very sanguine view of this. Oh, I try not to become emotionally involved in my client's problems. Just financially involved, is it? Raymond, really. Sorry about that, Mr Lockwood. But the lad blames himself for what happened. Well, if you'd let me take the light bulbs, Arthur, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, I do blame myself. And take a very serious view of your uh, alleged assault of the police officer. Assault? He fell over me foot. He sustained facial injuries, including three broken teeth. Yeah, but I didn't hit him. The ground did. I thought he was after me wallet. It was in my hand at the time. Yes, indeed. While you were allegedly negotiating with a convicted prostitute. I was trying to find a local motor dealer. Yeah. Well, it's an unusual defence if you could actually find him. I grant you that. The police solicitor advises me that prior to your arrest, there were numerous sightings of a man driving a Daimler very slowly in the area. That was me. And me. We were looking for good time motors. Yes, as your statements say. Be useful for your defence if you could actually find the proprietor. On prime time, name suppression in court cases. These two are guilty of a serious white collar crime, yet their identity is being kept from the public. Tonight, we can reveal their names, but ask if the system of keeping identities private needs to be changed. Also this evening, the Benson and Hedges Fashes Awards in Wellington. We'll show the winning outfits. Final this afternoon. One of the talking points of the morning has been who will do the pitchings for the underdogs this afternoon. 
They have available to them that man there, Steve Jackson, having his last gasp before the action gets underway. And that indeed is who they're starting the pitching with this afternoon. Marshall Seifert, how does that strike you? Had to go with Steve. He's, uh, he was the guy that had won the World Series. He's been up and down this year. Hasn't really hit form. It hasn't been a big year for softball this year, so he hasn't had to be the world's best. He's totally erratic. He's uh, a, a Mac and row of, of sport, but I think he's a winner. And I'm the only guy on the ground here that says that Auckland is going to win this game, Gary. Yeah, well, it'll be a big one this afternoon, all right. And uh, it's a pretty strong Hutt Valley lineup that we have with uh, Mark Sorensen starting the batting for the Valley. He'll be followed by Ross Green, Bruce Beard, and then Dave Workman. So a rather formidable lineup for Hutt Valley in the batter's box. And as I said before, Auckland, they started in a pretty dramatic fashion in this tournament. Ooh. But since then, it's been a struggle. Did you see that slip then, Gary, on right. the mound? Now, he's used to digging a big hole out there, and they've got a mat down in the ground to stop guys from digging holes. And he just uh, did a Torval and Dean then and had a, a nice skid of about three or four feet, which won't please Steve Jackson. But the more things that irritate Jackson, the better he goes. Indeed. He runs rather well when he's hot. And uh, I think really what the, the Auckland coach should do is go out there with a knitting needle and jam him in the backside with it before they get underway and that stokes him up a bit well i think he did get a jam in the backside <laughs> there yesterday against against hut valley auckland lost eight two they took a real bath and he's the one who had started the game and gave up i think about half of those runs before he, he got yanked off but this is this is the final he's been in finals of world series and auckland Let's let's say this, that for five days, Hutt Valley have walked on water. They have done nothing wrong, Gary. Now it's the final. Auckland have a terrific competition at home. Lots of vital games. They're used to pressure. I think Auckland just could do it. Ready for the first pitch of the game to this man, Mark Sorensen, who yesterday batted four out of four against this Auckland side in a Hutt Valley team that took 15 hits off the Aucklanders yesterday afternoon. Mark Sorensen... Here Captain for the Hutt Valley team, with an average of .483, what an average. Well, with the sad loss this year of Cotter, I'd have to say that Sorensen now is our world superstar. Sorensen and Stringer, I'd say, could now play for any softball side in the, in the world. And uh, with the age of Sorensen, it's just amazing. There's a good hit. He'll have to hurry it, and he's safe. Safe on one with a diving slide, which I think is foolish in softball, but Sorensen just carried it off. A good scrambling hit. Exactly what you want as a coach at the start of a final. You want your first runner on. Having another look at it, because it bubbles into the ground. It bounces really high. Covering in from shortstop is Brett McKenzie. There's the throw, and the sliding dive of Sorensen, safe on one. Here's a good butt. Penny's got it out at one. Good sacrifice. Good softball. Exactly what 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 Hutt would expect at this time is that you need a runner on two with only one down. So Ross Green far. doing a good job there with that sacrifice bunt. He really had to put the ball into the dirt. He did exactly that. Moves Mark Sorensen. You see him at the top of the picture there, standing on second base. And Bruce Beard steps to the plate, who has hit more home runs, I think, than any other batter at this tournament. Well, he's got three, and he is in form. This guy is really batting well. And if anybody's going to hit the long ball here today, it's going to be Beard. Good pitch outside corner. Now, this has been Steve's problem, is that he started slow. Auckland cannot concede an early run. They've got to put pressure on the hut. So this is vital stuff here, Gary. Bruce Beard ready for Steve Jackson. Number seven, you see him there in the wind -up. Good out, good out by Jackson. Okay, well, the pressure is not off now because uh, a wild one would score Sorensen. But at least there's two out, so a long fly ball would retire the side. 
Now, here's the young man up to bat, Gary, that everyone is talking about. Workman, it's his first season up in the hut. And from, I wouldn't say obscurity in Christchurch, he is now spoken of as the, as the New Zealand third bag. 462, that's his average, Dave Workman. He's the second top uh, batter at this tournament. And a deliberate walk is being issued here by the looks of things. They want to get away from Workman, but they have Bobby Jones, the designated hitter, next up. So there they go with a deliberate walk for Dave Workman. Maybe they'll load him. Maybe well, they'll load the bases. Okay, that's not stupid either. I don't okay, know. It's running from behind a little. I wouldn't want to be doing it, but Workman has a reputation of being able to hit the ball pretty hard. Yeah, but he's just a kid, and this is a final. I don't know. Gee, this is terrible, because if they concede anything more than one run, this ball game is going to be over. Now what do they do? They have Jones up. Do you load the bases, which means it's a force out at any base? I would walk Jones and attack young Kerr. Right. Yeah, that's probably what's in their mind, too. And it's not the stupidest thing to do because Kerr is a scamperer around the bases like you've never seen. But meanwhile, they have to get rid of this fellow. Bobby Jones, an average of just 0.56, doesn't say Gee, a lot for his batting, he? batting ability. He's a better batter than that average suggests. Well, he's New Zealand DH material, so Bobby Jones is having a pretty lean. Oh, that's why they're going to pitch to him. Oh, Steve boy. Jackson ready for Jones. Okay, now we'll see if there's a steal on here of two by Workman. It's not really necessary, and I don't know if I would gamble it with Carl Gould, the New Zealand catcher on here. This is dynamite stuff, pitching to, uh, to a New Zealand batter. Hey! Good pitch. Gee, a lot of pressure on, on Jones here, isn't it? It sure is. It's One embarrassing for Jones. Right, runners on first and third. There are two outs. We're in the top half of the first innings, Auckland against Wellington in the final. Here it is. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now they got to stop the second run. In comes the ball, and he's out. He's out at three, but meanwhile, the run have scored. Hutt have the lead that they wanted. And it's going to take a monumental effort. Here it comes now. Good, good hit by Jones. Lined it. Pass diving Colassi into right field. Now watch this good throw from Ross Green. I don't mean from Ross Green, I mean from Henniger in right field. And there's the slide. He must have got him yeah. at the start of the slide. He then. must have because it, uh, I mean, there was no doubt about it from umpire Saunders, who Wayne Saunders very quick to get his arm up. But meanwhile, being one down in the top half of the first innings, that's not a good situation to run with, Marshall. No, no, it's bad. Auckland really needed a one-run lead because all of the pressure is on, on Matt, Auckland. Let's go. They've got to win twice, and Hutt gave him a bath yesterday. So Hutt Valley would be very pleased at this moment to have this one-run lead. Now, Auckland have to get it back straight away. They can't waste time, or it's going to be 3-0. Pitching for the Hutt Valley team this afternoon is what many regard as being the number one pitcher in New Zealand, Paul McGann. And uh, it really is a bit of a battle between McGann and Steve Jackson as to who does occupy the number one pitching slot in New Zealand. And I guess it's some sort of justice that we have here in the final this afternoon, Hutt Valley and Auckland with the two top pitchers in this country. Well, re, re, there is also White, who is overseas. He's right. got to be in the top three there. But that's right. Uh, as far as New Zealand goes at the moment, we've got our top two in this game. Well, Brett, well, well. Brett McKenzie, who plays out of the Ramblers Club in Auckland with an average of 0.200. Here's Brett. Now, Gary, I think they have to attack third base. If I were Auckland, I would look for a lot of early, scratchy bunts and hits under the left side of the diamond. Because Hutt Valley just haven't got a weakness, Gary, as far as I can see. Well, they're pretty tight in the field, and uh, we've just seen how they can do damage with the bat when the pressure is on. So, McKenzie back into the batter's box two strikes and Paul McGann who told me before the game that he really felt as though he would be running hot this afternoon but confessed to a poor game yesterday now we can't afford a strike out here I would have him bunt on third strike I would apply a maximum amount of oh, that's why I'm glad you don't coach New Zealand 
<laughs> Two strikes on Brett McKenzie. There's no good him striking out at this stage. That's over the fence. Foul ball, strike two, the count remains. Now, that's, it's quite interesting to see that uh, McKenzie is able to get bat to ball against Paul McGann. He is not beating the bat too viciously, and this is the top half of the first innings. Wow, there's a wild one. That would give hope to the Auckland Hearts. Ball. Umpire England calling the balls and strikes this afternoon. Signals ball two, strike two. Pressure is on Auckland with a capital P. He's got it. That's the first out of the game for Auckland. And not a great start for Auckland when you measure it against the Hutt Valley start. There's Mackenzie out. Carl Gould will step to the plate. There you see Gould, who is now regarded as one of the top catchers in this country, along with that fellow behind him, uh, Mark Sorensen. In fact, at the moment, Gary, that's all we've got. It's quite a serious thing at the moment, is that if either of these two had gotten uh, hurt at the moment, New Zealand would really have to scratch to get a third catcher. Good hit! Hey. Oh, look what I found, Mother! Give us a smile, McGann. We just saw what you got for your birthday. Sheesh! He put up the glove to protect his face, and his fairy godmother working overtime stuck the ball in it. Watch this. I don't know that he ever knew he had it in his glove, you know. He no, no, I got it all wrong. Good catch, Paul. He looked in the outfield to see where it's gone. <laughs> it's buried in his glove. Two outs. A grand... That's when the ball starts running for you. you when you... When you Nothing's going to go hunt. wrong today. <laughs> Two outs. Eddie Colassi, the new batter for Auckland. They trail 1-0. Ball. Well, Colassi isn't batting either. Gee, this Auckland side, uh, we've seen batting averages here that are grim for a squad this good. Ooh, and he fooled him completely on that one. He was about a, a foot away from that pitch. It dropped well under the bat. Colassi knows it was a bad miss. Here's McGann. I'd say after that catch there, uh, He'll be looking for a strikeout. Yeah, that's put back to ball. It's going. It's down the right field line, but it's foul. Good smack. Swung late. Ball straight down that right field line, but just curved foul. Right. It's 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 important that Auckland don't strike out at the moment. Why I say that is that with a pitcher as good as McGann, who is really hot, once he starts to hit the groove. He's going to be dynamite. So as long as the ball is being moved, uh, which doesn't matter if it's if you're out on a hit, as long as you don't strike out. Eddie Colassi still in the batter's box. Oh, that's just what they didn't want. Beautiful pitch by McGann. Great catch, good strikeout to end the innings. Hut looked top. Let's see this uh, strikeout now. Here it comes. Coles just missed it. Good, but his feet, he was jammed on that. Not an elegant swing at all, Eddie. That's one that uh, you'll want to forget. But I don't know how you stop Hut at the moment. Uh, I think it's very important that Jackson starts to get some strikeouts. Here's uh, Steve on the mound now. Now he's down by one. He's had a, a, a rum season so far, Steve. His club side did not win the Auckland champs. And he's been up and down all year. And now he's down by one run against a side that's just annihilated everybody else in this championship. Actually, with the exception of Canterbury, their game was 1-0. Very brave Canterbury side this year, which, unlike these other sides, did not really have a first-line pitcher. In fact, it was R Roger Keith who was uh, used to go for Southland back in my day, Gary. 
OK, the first batter up for Hutt Valley in their second turn at bat is Simon Kerr. And Simon Kerr is the leg man in the team. He's the one with the big motor that pumps those legs along, and he doesn't bat the ball at all. He is a bunter. He only ever hits the ball very shortly. Let's watch and see how he goes. This foul. Now he's a left-handed batter, which, of course, he gives him a meter advantage, at least, on a right-handed batter on that scramble down to one. And the ID starts at the back of the box, comes charging up, hits it down, and just continues on. Low and outside is really where you want to go. Although he's so short uh, that anywhere on the outside corner is really where you want to go against it. Oh, got him in the inside, struck him out. First out of the innings, and that is Simon Kerr as a goner. It'll bring to back John Nightingale, and he'll be followed by Brian Green and Brett Dalton. That's the bottom slice of the Hutt Valley batting order. Here's John Nightingale from the Hutt City Club in Wellington. Seven hits from 28, 25 turns at bat, but there's the important one. He's batted in six runs six in the tournament RBIs. so far. That's six good. RBI, that's where it counts. Now, this is the player who came. Usually, we speak about the player who was left behind. In this case, they left behind that sensational American player, Young, and they brought this young lad with a lot of controversy in the hut, Gary, wasn't it? Indeed, yeah, there was. And this kid has come up trumps. In fact, speaking with Dawson, he was saying he's been his best fielder, and you don't usually get your best field as a shortstop. That's a good dropping delivery from Steve Jackson. He fast-armed the ball down, but it dropped out of the strike zone, and he throws a really good drop ball, does Jackson. In fact, he's got a pretty good armory of deliveries right through his whole repertoire. Jackson. Kalassi makes it two out. Eddie Kalassi is one of the safest glove men in the game. I saw him taken out here yesterday, which was just unbelievable. And uh, Eddie Kalassi, who is the number one second base for New Zealand. And there he goes, number four, Eddie Kalassi. He actually took a ball that was heading for out in centre field. He ran past second base towards the outfield, grabbed the ball, and then whacked it back to first base over his shoulder. And how he did it, I'll never know. He's, a, he's just a marvellous player. Brian Green up to bat. His, ba his balance, really, I th think is just so amazing. Now, here's, here's the only experience Hutt have, isn't it? I mean, with Green as sort of the old man amongst the boys out there in that infield. You'll have to hurry it. Good out, Greg Penny. Good out. He had to wait for that ball, which is no fun at third base. It, it was a high bouncing ball. Now, watch how fast he gets this throw away. He's got to wait for it. Wait, wait, wait. Now he's got to get rid of it quick. Snap. Go the wrist. Just out at one. Very good play. Okay, into the bottom half of the second innings we move. Auckland to take their second turn at bat. There'll be Jody Henniger, followed by their designated hitter Ian Stringer, and then Ron Gooden. Well, Gary, actually at the start of this game, I thought that Auckland would have to attack with a lot of bunts and attempt to scratch the first run lead. Now that they're one behind, they really have to get a long handle into the ball. And these, these guys up now are the ones who can equalize this game. The next three batters are the big home run hitters, and Auckland really need an equalizer at the moment. They don't need a little scratchy bunt. They need Henniger, this guy here, to to uh, smack the ball over the fence. From the Metro Club in Auckland is Jody Henniger. Come on, Jody! Jody Henniger, number 13 for Auckland. Five hits from 23 turns of bat and is better than the RBI, means two runs better than. Actually, Gary, each of those RBIs were scoring himself with the home run, so he's already yeah. knocked two home runs. He's big enough. He's a big lad. Uh, if you recall, we saw him at the Cowans. He was the Canadian on the mound from Metro. 
But McGann knows that he's got a couple of home runs, and I don't think you'll see him serve him up anything around the middle or anything high. He'll keep it down low. Like that. Here going, 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 there they go, bang, bang, bang. Thank you very much, and boy, did they need that. They had their bums put against the wall yesterday by Hutt Valley. They were down 1-0 in this game, and Henniger puts it right back in there with a big one over the left field fence. Okay, well, what a hit it was. It was what was needed to snap the game into action. The ball was in the meat of the strike zone. Henniger just swacked into the ball, and there it was. It was about 30 feet over the fence, and there's the Hutt Valley sportsmanship. They clap his hand themselves as he goes round, and what a greeting for Jody Henniger as he heads for home. He has tied the ball game up at one all. Yeah, actually, Gary, I think I think it was a low drop he hit. <laughs> I think that ball was low, and how he got it over the fence, I don't know. But anyway, here's Stringer. Now. Ian, Ian is not having a good run this week, but w when you speak about New Zealand on the world scene, Strings is our man. He can hit home runs anywhere in the world, and he's keen. Look at that.